Yo, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to another YouTube video. So in this video, we're going to go over how to optimize our mouses in order to make sure that we're getting the lowest possible input lag and the smoothest pulling rate variation on the mouse. So we're just going to go over some physical things that you have to set up before watching this video in order to make sure that your mouse just doesn't have any issues that are physical. First things first, do not plug your mouse or any latency sensitive device in the front of the PC. The front of the PC uses the USB hub that comes with the case which ideally is fine but i just put it in the back like you might have gotten a faulty usb hub from the case manufacturer or something along those lines just use the one directly on the motherboard just to save yourself a lot of headache so if you're on amd there are special usb hubs which basically are controlled by the cpu and there are usb hubs which are controlled by the chipset aka the motherboard ideally you want to use the cpu i'm not going to go over how to do that on this video you can just go watch one of my best usb ports videos in order to understand which usb ports that you should be using for amd for intel it generally doesn't matter just make sure you're plugged into the intel usb controller then another thing is using a quality mouse pad and a clean mouse pad now i know a lot of you are lazy and probably just haven't cleaned your setups in months probably years so this is probably a good time to take out your mouse pad put it in the bathtub and start washing that thing because i know it's just disgusting and another thing is cleaning the sensor inside your your mouse you could do that however i'd recommend using something that just blows air into it an air compressor is good but that one might be too strong so just use one of those things that you use to blow up a balloon with that's just some of the physical things that you could do in order to make sure the mouse doesn't have any problems and doesn't have any issues now another thing is wireless versus wired ideally you just want wired wireless is great i like the concept of having a wireless mouse you don't have this cable dangling along that messes up your aim but in some cases in some households your wireless mouse will get interrupted by other wireless things in your house so your pulling rate variation is going to be all over the place because of that so if that's not an issue that you particularly have then by all means go use a wireless mouse but if you have like the router right next to you like literally right on your desk and you have your wireless mouse right there you probably don't want that you probably want to go get a wired mouse so some of the best mouses that are out right now one of them is the op 1 8k which is a end game 8000 hertz mouse which is probably like the s tier mouse that's probably the best mouse you could get at the market right now so if you're looking for that go get that another one would be the viper v3 pro which is an 8000 hertz mouse basically if you have a good pc go get an 8000 hertz mouse if you don't really have a good pc just go get a razor viper mini or go get a g pro or something that some of the pros use but without further ado let's get right into what you could do on windows to make sure that you have the lowest possible mouse latency and the lowest pulling rate variation all right guys so head over to the link in the description and download the mouse option optimization guide.zip file and the password to this file is going to be zilly.net all capital so just extract it using winrar or 7zip and just type zilly.net and it's going to extract so go in the folder go in there and then the first step we're going to do to optimize our mouse is uninstall the mouse software or just use an alternative program that doesn't run in the background so the alternative program is just for ghub only for other mouses there's not really an alternative program that doesn't run in the background but if your mouse has a program that does it run in the background you just open it and you edit your settings and then you can close it and it closes out completely use that perfectly fine you don't have to install it but things like razor synapse etc just uninstall it there's no point and if you use ghub uninstall it and use this alternative instead and this is just onboard memory manager it's just edits the memory on the mouse so it always saves on the mouse no matter where you plug it into so for me i'm on a razor mouse so we're going to do just mouse settings and this is just a general tip regardless of what mouse you have now pulling rate is going to be the most different with everyone here so if you have a 8000 hertz mouse you could try doing 8000 hertz however for 8000 hertz you need to do special things for that so number one is going to be being on windows 11 because they updated windows on that version where it supports higher pulling rate mouses now you could go and get that or you could just stick to windows 10 and just drop down that pulling rate but i'd recommend just going to windows 11 if you want 8000 hertz now if you're getting stutters or fps drops because of 8000 hertz that just means your system can't keep up with 8000 thousand hertz so you can just drop it down or you can join my discord server and get your pc overclocked if you have high-end specifications just because a lot of this stuff regarding the mouse is just very very system based i'm going to try to make this video just strictly towards the mouse but in order to have good mouse input delay you need to optimize your whole system but we're just going to leave it towards the mouse for this video but if you're interested in getting your system fully overclocked i'm talking ram cpu and gpu just go to my discord server and open up a ticket with the overclocking services and you'll get your pc 
overclocked with no issues whatsoever. But anyways, once you're in the software, for example, Synapse, you're going to pretty much go to performance and then we're going to turn off sensitivity stages. We don't want our DPI changing while we're playing. And for example, I'm over here using 1600 DPI, 800 and above is what you should be using. 400 DPI is just outdated. You're going to get higher input delay with 400 DPI just because there's less dots per inch that your mouse sensor sees. So the more DPI you have, the better technically, but at some point it's just diminishing returns. So I recommend 1600 DPI and then just divide your in-game sense by however much you increase your DPI by. If you are on 400 DPI and you increase it to 1600 DPI, just divide your in-game sense by four and then just use that in-game sense. So I'm on 1600, for example, and I'd recommend that for most mouses. Polling rate, I'm um, at thousand. Now, again, as I said earlier, if your system can't keep up with higher polling rate, just drop it back down. This is more of a trial and error process for polling rate. So if 4,000 Hertz is still too much, you could drop it down to 2,000. If that's still too much, just do a thousand. Most PCs should be able to do a thousand, however. Then you're going to go to lighting, just turn off RGB. RGB is going to cause the mouse to pull more power and it's going to cause more heat in the mouse and it's just going to cause input delay. There's some people that say, oh, it's not that big of a difference. It's up to you. We're making this guide basically to get you the lowest possible latency on the mouse. So if you care about RGB on the mouse, by all means, use it. However, it should just be off if you care mostly about input delay. So once you've done all that, this should save on my mouse now. I literally don't have to do anything else. So now I'm just going to uninstall Razer Synapse because I don't want this running in the background and I don't want it starting up whenever I start my PC. So I'm going to uninstall it just like so. Uninstall, check that. All right. So once you've uninstalled your mouse software or just closed out of it completely, you're going to go to the second folder in the mouse optimization guide. And this is just some basic mouse tweaks. So for example, this disable driver power saving, what this is going to do is in device manager, there is this stuff in your USB devices where it sets it to power saving. So for example, if you go to power management on any of these USB input devices, you can see that it allows the computer to turn off this device to save power. You obviously don't want that checked. So running this bat file just basically disables it for everything that's connected to your PC that is a USB. Now the second one is the mouse tweaks. And this is just general tweaks that you should do for lower mouse latency. So we have some BCD edit tweaks that help with the timers on your system. Then we have disabling mouse acceleration through registry. And here's the Mark C mouse fix. Now, all of this is pretty simple. It just helps your mouse be good within Windows. But anyways, once you've run both of these, you go back, go to mouse number three, and then this basically sets a mouse driver, which is called csrss.exe in your system to high priority. Now, there is going to be a revert for this. I'm going to add it later. So if you need to revert this for whatever reason, you can. But what this is going to do is if you look into task manager and go to details, this process right here, csrss.exe, this will be set to high priority. And this is good just because it will prioritize your mouse feel and it should just feel a lot better. So you just double click on this, press yes, press OK. And I'll add a revert in here just because you guys, some of you might not like it. So yeah. And then we're going to go back. We're going to go to proper way to set up timer and resolution. So this is just going to take you to a guide on my YouTube on how to properly set up timer resolution on Windows 11. Now, if you're on anything below Windows 11, this is sadly not going to work just because you need a specific Windows version for timer resolution to work. And the reason for that is just because after the 2020 May update of Windows 10, timer resolution basically just stopped working entirely. They broke it. So if you want to get it working, either upgrade to Windows 11 or downgrade to a Windows version that is below Windows version 2004. And the easiest way to check which Windows version you're on, you could just open up your search bar on Windows type WinVer, and then you could check right here which version you're on. So that's up to you guys if you want to switch and do a complete reinstallation of Windows. But I highly recommend doing it just because time resolution setting up properly is going to help a lot. And there's some fixes within Windows 11 that are generally good for most systems. Now go back to mouse optimization guide, go to number five. And this is really important. This is the proper way to plug in your USB ports on your motherboard. So for Intel, it's super simple, guys. You just plug it in the motherboard in the back. And then once you do that, for example, if you go to device manager, click view, device by connection, scroll down and expand the Intel extensible host controller, you'll see your mouse and keyboard down here. Now, if you're on AMD, you're going to have two of these or maybe even more, probably four of these USB controllers. And that's what this guide is for. Just watch this video in order to figure out which one of those USB controllers are the best for your mouse, keyboard or controller if you're watching this on a controller. And then go back to mouse optimization guide. And this is just for Intel systems only. This is called disabling XHCI interrupt moderation. And for most systems that are high end, you can do this. But if you're probably on a low end system, like a low end Intel CPU that's quite old, probably test this around, see if this helps you. But what we're going to do for this one specifically is we're going to go to the first folder 
folder, which is move this to startup folder. You're going to right click on this, click copy. And at the top of the search bar in Explorer, type shell colon startup, press enter. You're going to right click in the blank space, click paste. It's going to add this disable imod.bat file. And then you're going to go back to the Intel only folder. And then you're going to go to move this to C drive. And then to copy this, you're going to go to your C drive and you're going to paste this in the here. As you see, I already have it in there. So I'm going to paste it in there. You're going to go back and then you're going to double click RW everything. And this is the program we're going to be using to disable this feature within your USB controller. So press next, press next, install and press finish. You can close out of it now. And then if you go to move this to the startup folder, you could double click disable iMod and it should work and it should prop up with those numbers and then just close out of it. it means that it works. And the reason we added it into shell startup is because if you go to apps and then you go to startup, you will see disable iMod.bat is on startup. So every time you start up your PC, it will disable the setting. Now, if you want to revert this, you just delete this file from shell startup. So for example, you would click this address bar right here, type shell startup, and then just delete this. That's all you got to do. You can also uninstall the program that it uses to disable iMod. That's if you want to revert it. I know some people have noticed FPS drops with this disabled, but your input lag is drastically different. And again, guys, this is only for Intel. On AMD, there is a way to do it. I just don't know how to do it. And I don't really have the time to figure out how. So if any of you are on AMD and figured out how to disable iMod, leave it down in the description. Maybe I'll make an updated video with AMD. But then if you do get an error, some of you might get an error on Windows 11. If you can't load RW everything, like let's just say you open it and it gives you driver cannot be loaded error. Just double click in this folder and then just run this and restart to fix. Press yes and press OK. And what that's going to do is going to fix it. So then you're able to disable iMod. But some games will not work after running this. So the games like the finals, CSGO might not work just because this disables something within Windows. And I mean, it's just a security feature that we're disabling to let RW everything run. And these games just have an anti-cheat that doesn't really like that. So if that happens, just run the revert file and restart. Now we're going to go back to the mass optimization guide. We're going to go to Windows Power Plan. And then there are two power plans that you should be using. And there are a very specific to your CPU. So if you have an AMD CPU, just double click this one. If you have an Intel CPU, double click this one. So I'm on Intel. I'm going to double click this. As you can see, it will just flash and then close. Now it's going to ask you for administrator probably. So just press yes on that. And that's pretty much it. Now you should be on the best power plan for Intel or for AMD, depending on what system you're on. And then once you do that, you can just pretty much restart your PC. And then once you restart your PC, we can check your polling rate variation. After doing all of this, it should be drastically different compared to before. So what you're going to do, you're going to double click on this, you're going to double click the mouse tester, and then you're just going to type your DPI in here. So for example, 400 DPI is going to be 400 CPI, just type 1600 for me. And then you're going to click collect. And then with this program still selected in the bottom right here, as you see, I'm selecting it. All you have to do is just click on the spot right here and draw a circle. I'd say draw around four circles. And then once you do that, it'll say press plot to view the data. You can press plot and then you would change the plot type to frequency versus time. And as you can see, my polling rate variation is pretty nice right now. I am recording. I do have a lot of stuff running in the background. Ideally, you don't want to run this with stuff running in the background. But as you can see, these dots are super close to a thousand hertz, which is what my mouse is running at. Now for you, it might be close to 2000 hertz or it might be close to 4000 hertz or it might be close to 8000. Either way, you want these dots to be super close to the number of your polling rate, just because this means the polling rate variation is not bad and it's very close to your polling rate. If you have a lot of dots like going all over the place, for example, I would ignore this part right here. This is whenever you stop clicking your mouse. So you would just type 3400 data endpoint and this will show up while you were moving your mouse around. And as you can see, mine dropped down here, which isn't really that great, but I'm getting about 40 to 30 hertz between a thousand hertz. Now, ideally, you want these dots as close to the middle as possible if you have it set up like how I did if you just added the data endpoint to 3400. So, for example, I'll do this again. So, I'm going to click collect, draw four circles, and you want to do it at consistent speed. You don't want to be super fast and then super slow in the next circle. So, it's, it's a bit of a trial and error process to get this going, but once you do figure it out, it's pretty easy. To, so, click plot, change the plot type to frequency versus time. And as you can see, this is where I'm going to end off the data endpoint to 2,500 data endpoint. And as you can see, this is this result is slightly a bit better. We're now like 25 hertz between 1,000. So not bad at all, but I do have stuff running in the background. So that does affect it. As you can see, you guys, that's pretty much how to check your polling rate variation. And if you have a lot of dots like all over the place, like down here and down here, there is something wrong with either your mouse or you have it plugged into a bad USB port 
or a lot of other things. So experiment with this, but the stuff that we did in the mouse optimization guide is going to help you guys a lot. It's going to make a massive difference in how your game feels in your FPS. But anyways, guys, if you guys are interested in getting significant performance differences and a lot of changes done to your mouse pulling rate variation and just making this stable, I would recommend joining my Discord server and getting an overclock done for your CPU and RAM. CPU and RAM is practically the most important thing that you have to get overclocked in your PC just because it will lower your latency by a drastic amount. And from some overclocks, like for example, the RAM overclock, you will gain 30% more FPS in games like Call of Duty. In games like Fortnite, you might gain 50%. It really just depends, but I highly recommend if you're looking for super low latency, get your stuff overclocked if it is overclockable. But for most of you, RAM should be overclockable if your motherboard supports RAM overclock. Now, guys, if you're interested in that, go join the Discord server and go to the overclocking services channel where you'll see the ticket maker in order to make a ticket for overclocking. But anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel, comment down below what you want to see next, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.